Play 100 Entertainment was founded in July of 2016 by a man called Baek Jong-ok. Then the company sent some of their trainees to Mix9, those being John Yim, Yu Dong-yu, Son Min-jung, Lee Ha-young, Kim Sua, and Hwang Yong-kyung. However, only two of the girls, Yim and Kim Sua, made it past the auditions. Yim ended up being eliminated in the 7th episode with a rank of 86, and Sua was eliminated in the 13th episode, placing 22nd. In 2017, it was announced that A100 had formed a pre-debut girl group that was set to debut soon. But before the girl group had their debut, one of the girls not in the lineup, Yim, made her debut as a solo artist on April 7th, 2018 with a single called Meet Me at a Corner. I will touch more on this later in the video, as she kind of just disappeared after she debuted. Just a few weeks after Yame's debut, on June 27th, the girl group Knee and Punch debuted. Three of the girls from the editions for Mix 9 were in this group, those being Yu Dong-yu with the stage name Ian, Kim soo Ah with the stage name Becca, and Hwang yong kyung with the stage name Dayeon. Along with them, two other girls were added to the group, Terry and Mei. Just a quick mention, the other two girls who auditioned in Mix 9 under A100, Son Min Jung, also known as Arang, and Lee Ha Young, were also in the debut lineup for Neon Punch, but then left A100 before the group actually debuted. Now back to Neon Punch's debut. As I said before, Neon Punch debuted on June 27, 2018. Their debut song was called Moonlight, same as the title for their debut single album. <laughs> Along with the title track, the album had an instrumental of the title track and a Chinese version of the song. It peaked at 37 the Gaon music chart and the girls promoted it on multiple music shows and they released a music video for the Chinese version as well. After promoting in Korea, Ni and Punch traveled to Japan in August to promote themselves there. They had a showcase, fan meetings, and more. From what I understand, they did sing in Korean as there's no Japanese version of the song. Sometime in mid to late 2018, a horrible prank was played on Nian Punch. The CEO of A100 Entertainment was in on it and asked the group to come talk to him and suddenly he announced that he did not see a future for the group and he wanted the group to disband. On top of that, he talked to each girl after breaking the news, asking them if they wanted to continue on as a trainee. After toying with the girl's feelings, he finally revealed that the prank was all fake and they were not actually disbanding. The prank made a lot of people angry and upset, saying it was not okay to play with someone's feelings like this. I will touch more on this later in the video. Then, suddenly on October 4th, it was announced that Terry would be taking a break due to personal reasons. Nothing more was said about her until months later, on January 17th, 2019, when it was announced that she would be leaving the group due to health reasons. With the news hitting that Terry was leaving the group, the company thought it was a good idea to also use this time to announce that the group was planning a comeback and that they were adding a new member called Dohi. Now, I don't want to make it sound like I don't like Dohi. In fact, I really like her. I just dislike the idea that they decided to announce this all together not giving Terry a fair goodbye. Just a few days after this announcement, teasers for the, for the group's first comeback were released. Ni and Punch, now consisting of Dayeon, Becca, Mei, Ian, and Dohi, had their comeback with the mini album Watch Out with on January 30, 2019 with the title track TikTok. After this comeback, A100 Entertainment started a Make Star campaign to try to fund another comeback for Neon Punch. The campaign started in late March of 2019 and people could support on different levels for different perks. For those who might not know, Make Star is a website where idols can ask their fans to help them fund albums, comebacks, and so on. A lot of idols use this website, especially if they're from a smaller company. When I talk about this funding project on Make Star for groups, I like to check out the page, the goals, and such, but in this case, I tried to find a link and the webpage seemed to be down. I had no clue what why this happened and after digging deeper I found a reddit post where some things became even clearer but at the same time also very confusing. According to this reddit post the Make Star campaign passed the goals and then some. The project was up for like a year and there was no updates given for like seven months until May 2020 when the project disappeared off the site and Make Star started sending emails to the people who had backed the project to offer a refund. According to the Reddit poster, people could reach out to MakeStar for a refund until May 25th. In the email from MakeStar that was from A100 Entertainment, some interesting information was revealed. 
they said that they had tried to have a comeback with an album, but it kept being delayed, whatever that means. They also said that Dohi was facing some personal issues and that May wanted to concentrate on her studies. They also announced that a unit would be formed with Dayan, Becca, and Ian. This email was sent out on April 24th. So in another announcement from that same day, it was announced that the unit would be happening in June of 2020. Then on May 13th, it was announced that the unit with Dayan, Becca, and Ian would have a debut at the end of June under the name SUM, which stands for Something Unlimited Move. The group, however, didn't debut at the end of June, and it was pushed back. Then, it was suddenly announced on August 11th, 2020, that Nia Punch would be disbanding. They posted a statement about the disbandment onto the Twitter, and I will read the post now. Hello, this is A100. The debut date of Nia Punch unit group soon is approaching, and after much consideration, we announced that Nia Punch will be disbanding as of August 11th. We are sincerely sorry that people will not be able to see Nia Punch as a group again, although many people have been waiting for them. A100 and the members of Nia Punch worked hard with a goal of making a comeback in May of 2019, but due to worsening economic situation of the agency, as well as the suspension of activities for two members, that date continued to be late delayed. There were many factors this year, including the COVID-19 pandemic that led us to the conclusion that it would be difficult to maintain the girl group Nia Punch, and the decision was reached to, for the group to officially disband. Regarding the members who suspended their activities, Dohi and May, it is still difficult for Dohi to resume activities due to personal reasons, and May is currently taking a break as she is committed to her studies, so plans for their future activities are, are uncertain. However, we at A100 are determined and promise a return with a new girl group, Zoom, for all the ones who have been waiting, as well as the members who will be making another debut through the group. We sincerely apologize to all the fans who sincerely cared and loved Neon Punch. Thank you. Then, after the debut kept being pushed back, it was announced that Shum would officially debut on August 25th. But then, just a few days before the group was supposed to debut, it was announced that the debut had to be pushed back once again as a staff member had caught COVID. The girls and the staff all had to be quarantined, and a new date was set for September 24th of 2020. Finally, on September 24th, 2020, Shum made their debut with the single Da La La. Da, 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 da. But after the debut, the group didn't do much. They were featured on an OST for a K-drama called Please Don't Meet Him. But other than that, nothing was happening with Zoom and they slowly started disappearing from social media. The last tweet on their official account on Twitter was in December 24th, 2020 and their last Instagram post was in mid-December 2020. The three girls of Shum would, would post regularly to their own personal Instagram, but then at the start of 2021, Becca stopped posting completely. Fans were starting to get worried about this group, and then in March of 2021, fans went through a mix of emotion as the company announced that they had changed their name from A100 Entertainment to K-Pop Live Entertainment, and they announced that they were planning to debut a new girl group. Some fans hoped that the company was getting their act together, but other fans were worried that with a new girl group debuting, the company would leave Shum, just like they did with Neon Punch. I do want to add here that in some sources that I looked up, it is said that A100 changed their name to K-pop Live Entertainment, but in others it said that A100 was acquired by K-pop Live Entertainment. But I can't find much information about K-pop Live Entertainment before this, so I just want to add that these are both sources I found. On May 27th, 2021, a teaser for their new group called Hi L was posted, and in the description it said K-pop Live Entertainment is debuting a new girl group. The group consists of six wonderful members and is currently fired up with the presentation for the debut schedule in July. Keep it tuned for the exciting journey we have planned for our girl group and expect a lot of love for the future contents we have worked hard for your view. New girl group Hi L and Shum are under the same company. Also, A100 changed to K-pop Live Entertainment. June 1st of 2021 was a very messy day for the company, and I think this day really shows the company's true colors. Firstly, on that day, accounts for the new girl group Hyle were open, like Twitter and Instagram, and the members were also revealed. I will get more into the group in a moment. But on this same day, the company went onto their A100 Entertainment YouTube community tab and posted, we appreciate your support and hardly thank you, but we are announcing to the public Zoom is disbanded. Yes, you heard me right. They announced the group's disbandment on a YouTube community tab. A YouTube community tab that was posted last 
two years ago when Neon Punch was still around, and a channel that has less than 50k subscribers. The members also posted letters onto the group's Instagram, but I'm not gonna read it all, but I'll post them on the screen. Ian said in her post that she was very upset because she knew the fans had been asking for a comeback. She also said that she really wanted to continue working for the fans and releasing albums, but the disbandment had to happen due to various circumstances. In Becca's post, she said similar things to that the group had to end due to various circumstances, and she apologized to the fans. In Diane's post, she said that it was decided after a long time that Shum would disband. The last post on their social media is a photo of the three girls with this great font that says, Goodbye. Now, I will touch more on this disbandment and what happened around it later um, in the second part of this video. Now, since I don't want to leave out the new girl group, let's talk about High L. High L stands for High Inside Library, and the group is supposed to debut in July of 2021. The group lineup consists of six members, and the girls all have a representative color. The girls are Lee Jin, who has the color purple, Soo Jung, who has black, Da Kyung, who is the color orange, Yua, who is white, Ha Yoon, who is the color yellow, and Yesu, who has the color blue. Some photos have been posted onto the group's Instagram, but it's, it's not that much considering the fact that the group is supposed to debut next month. Now that I've gone over the history of the company and its idols, let's talk about why they are such a shitty company and why people should be calling them out for the stuff they're doing. First, let's start with Neon Punch and the way that they were treated. Firstly, it can't be seen as a good sign that so many members come and go from this one group, both pre-debut and after debut. I'm not saying that the reasons why the girls left, for example, health issues aren't real, but often it is not seen as a good sign for a rookie group. The bigger issue I have regarding Nia Punch, besides the disbandment itself, is that god-awful prank that they pulled. So, for some extra context, they were being filmed from something, and of course that was just a cover-up for the actual prank that was about to go down. So imagine being told by the owner of your company that you lost your dream job, not only in front of your own groupmates, but also in front of a bunch of cameras. And this wasn't just a quick prank either. They let the girls sit there and believe this prank for a while before telling them it was a joke. And seeing them try to keep it together throughout this whole video was heartbreaking. I don't know why this is supposed to be funny. I don't know anyone who would think this prank is funny. It was basically just to torment Neon Punch. Another thing that's a little bit shady on the company's part in connection to Neon Punch is the Make Star campaign. Now, as I said before, this is something a lot of groups do, so that's not the issue. The issue is the fact that although the group raised more than 100% of the goal, no comeback was ever announced. And the money that was offered back by Makestar as a refund, it was only a limited time and not everyone got their money back due to not knowing about what was going on. The company used the pandemic as a reason why they struggled with Neon Punch and Zoom, which is a valid reason. But they also had a lot of money that the fans gave to support Neon Punch, and the company just gave up. I believe somewhere in one of the statements, it is said that they almost collected double the set goal, which is a lot of money. As I mentioned before, some was supposed to be a unit group, but then Neon Punch just disbanded, so some was just a new group. Why not keep Neon Punch and just let the other two girls, if they want withdrawal, or leave or you know take a break instead of starting all the way back at zero with a new debut they basically disbanded neon punch just to start some and it's some str it's such strange logic that i just don't understand then we should talk about some their debut was okay it did go on music shows which is a good sign but in my opinion the music video was lacking and the song was us wasn't up to par with neon punch's debut moonlight and their comeback tiktok now, I'm not talking about concept-wise or tone-wise, I'm talking about the actual song, the instrumental, and the arrangement. There's nothing, as I said, there's nothing wrong with changing a concept, but it also just felt very strange. After the debut, the company didn't even try to push the group. With Neon Punch, they at least tried for the first couple of months, doing a Chinese version of the song, going to Japan, and so on. I know it's probably a lot harder to promote because of the situation going on in the world, but there wasn't even an attempt, really. We also don't know why they suddenly stopped posting onto social media. Like, at the end of 2020, some officials just stopped completely for no reason. Like, even groups that haven't had a comeback in over a year will still post on Twitter just to, you know, say hi to fans. But 
Nope, in this instance, they just disappeared with no explanation. Also, for some reason, as I mentioned before, Becca just completely stopped posting on her personal Instagram. But as soon as some disbanded, she posted like three or four times in the span of like a few days. Then, just like with Neon Punch, some disbanded suddenly and the company did it in the worst way manageable. Like, I have never heard of a group announcing their disbandment on a YouTube community tab. It is not only strange, it's also disrespectful to the group and its fans. But I guess they just suck at announcement in general, as they also made this mistake, or in my opinion, my mistake, when they announced Terry's departure, as they thought it was a great idea to use that time to announce not only a comeback, but a new member. Like, they couldn't even give her, like, a few hours or a day. Like, they couldn't even you know, let them know, and then, you know, let the fans know about the comeback a day later. Like, the bare minimum of respect was not even provided. They probably realized that with the new girl group debuting, they had to acknowledge some because fans were getting pissed off. So in their big smart brain, they decided to just disband the group to focus on a new group. It's like the company just can't have more than one group going on and even barely that. Also, the way they just left some and their fans in the air with no info for months and after some disbanded, the company started deleting their content off YouTube. Like, if you look up their music video, the only available one is on Genie's YouTube account. And when I try to click the original MV link for this some page, it's just set to private. So they also thought it was a great idea to just private most of the content on some's YouTube channel with no reason whatsoever ever given, and they haven't said anything. And it's not just like music videos, it's stand practices, it's the video that they last tweeted about is not up anymore. Like, nothing. <laughs> Fans of these two groups are very upset about the treatment of the girls, and, and most of them feel like some was only disbanded to make room for IL, even though that didn't have to happen. Now, I want to make it clear that the people are not blaming the new group, IL, or the girls in that group, but they're blaming the company for allowing this to happen. Fans of Neon Punch and Sim are also worried about the new group because they're scared they're gonna be treated the same way. I also want to talk about Yame, um, because after her debut, she did release a second single called Tell Me First at the end of 2018, and she also released an OST that same year. But after that, she, you know, nothing. She did appear on I Can See Your Voice and Miss Trot, but I can't even say if she's still a part of the company or not. She did post a cover on the YouTube channel about two months ago, but that was on A100's en Entertainment's YouTube channel, so who knows what's going on now that the company arrangement has changed. She doesn't mention her company in her Instagram bio either, and I can't seem to find A100's original website, so I can check for her on there, and on K-Pop's live website, I can't find anything about their artist. One thing that I found that I find really concerning is that on Yame's YouTube channel, she uploaded a video about two weeks ago where she seemed pretty upset. It was hard for me to understand as she spoke Japanese in the video and the only subtitles available were in Korean and I don't understand or speak either of those languages. But after reaching out to some of my viewers for help, I did get the gist of the video. I was hoping to find some information about her and her stance within the company, but the video seemed to be about other things. Interestingly, the video the video title says that the video might be taken down, but the video has been up for two weeks by this point. So from the translation I got, she's just really struggling and she can't seem to do the things that she wants to do, like meet friends. And she also seems very depressed and tired. She talks about being busy or that she can do the things that she wants to, which... Without proper context, I don't know what that means, but I do find it strange that she's being overworked to the point she's having a breakdown, but yet the company isn't providing content for the fans. Now, don't get me wrong, her being overworked and being upset is not okay, and I feel like the company should be helping her. But instead of doing whatever she's doing, why not provide something for the fans, or like a comeback? Something that she clearly cares about. It's very confusing. As I said, I don't understand the whole situation, but from what I got translated to me, she just talks about work and such in general, but we don't know like what she's up to these days completely. But it just seems like the company doesn't really care because she seems very upset and they're not doing what's best for her. 
neither as an idol or as a human being. まだまだ未熟なんやなって。もうすっごい思い知らされた。そう。すっごいなんか。こんな動画をあげるかってね誰が見たいってねもう完全な自己満なんやけど I don't understand why the company is not promoting her She is so talented, beautiful and she's multilingual There are so many things about her that would make her a perfect example of an idol that the public would love She was also in Mix 9, she has contact with her fans, she has social media like YouTube, and she's genuine. I just don't understand. I truly don't understand what the company is doing. As a fan of Ni and Pun, especially, I was so upset to see them disband and to see the chaos that was going on from the unit announcement till the disbandment of some. Is infuriating. The way that these girls were treated is just not fair. They wasted years of their lives and they, they were not given any platform to push themselves forward. I usually don't recommend this, but in this case, I highly recommend that you reach out to the company and pressure them for some answers. Why they treated Ni and Punch and Sum this way, why some disappeared off social media, why they decided to announce the disbandment the way they did, and why they are removing most of Sum's content off YouTube. The way the company is operating is confusing, lousy, disappointing, and not okay. I've been mad at a lot of K p o p companies, but this one is at the top of the list for just being plain lazy assholes. I'm sorry that this feels ranty. I just got inspired by some people on Instagram and I wanted to make this video and I sat down and wrote the whole script in like a weekend, but then after I found the video from Yame, it got pushed back a little bit. There's so much talent that is going to waste. It is upsetting to see, and it's even more upsetting to see that the company is treating these people and these idols so horribly. I think A100 or K pop Live or whatever they want to call themselves should be ashamed of themselves and how they're operating. And I frankly think they should not be managing K pop idols. I feel a sense of sadness when thinking about a new girl group HIL debuting. Because it is always exciting to see a new group. And I am really excited for these girls and I want to support them. But I cannot support this company. And it or its actions up until this point. They're still being complete idiots. It's not something that happened in the past. And they're trying to fix it. They haven't shown growth. If anything, they've shown the opposite of growth. I would really love if you checked out Neon Punch and some. My favorite song by them is TikTok, but I also like their debut. So please, you know, check them out. And also tell me in the comments if you know anything about them, if you've ever heard of them or the new group Hi L. And if you've heard about the company and just in general, what are your thoughts about the situation? Also, to leave the video on.、Uh, Better note, and since it was really fun last time, let's do a small game in the comment section, just like I did with my Hello Venus video. Let's comment down below a purple emoji, um any purple emoji, if you made it to the end of the video. I feel like I had to hold back a little bit because I didn't want to like curse too much or be too angry on this channel because I don't want to put that kind of energy out. But it is so hard when this is all going on. But thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it. Have a great day, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.